Strip Club, making their way through the fans to your favorite Jeff Club member. Check me. Get him in the summer. <laughs> Well, good evening and welcome to another Friday night edition of High School Football. Schnoot High School back in action tonight after a tough Friday last Friday. This week they'll go up against 0-3 Ulysses, the Tigers, out from Western Kansas, making the long trip to come out here and play underneath the lights at Schnoot High School's sports complex. My name is Dave Rimbold. I'm here to uh, take you through the evening. Uh, we'll do some play-by-play. -play. We'll tell you some stories, maybe. Who knows? We'll, we'll do some. We'll do something special, and hopefully, we'll be watching a Chanute Blue Comet victory. We're talking a lot about. We'll be talking a lot about who has to step up tonight. Unfortunately, Chanute has some injuries that we need to talk about. Uh, Gus Thuston, the wheels on the bus, the wheels on the Gus will not be going round and round tonight, as Gus is out nursing the concussion. The same with Hunter Anderson. So two guys off the line, some beef off the line. Some younger players gonna have to get in there and step up. And their very talented running back and linebacker, Quentin Harding, is out nursing a knee injury as well. That's a big loss as Quentin had been a leader on both sides of the ball thus far in the season. Um, such a heartbreaking thing. These, these young people, they you, you have no idea, unless you played sports, how hard they work, how much they look to this, and how much it hurts when you're not able to get out there and compete after all that preparation. So uh, prayers to the to those nursing the injuries that they'll be able to come back next week. And encouragement to the young guys who have to step up tonight and play at the varsity level maybe when they hadn't gotten much playing time. So uh, I'll, we'll try and get those guys to you as soon as we know who will be stepping up into those positions. Uh, what we do know is that your sophomore, Chris Harding, the second will be starting a quarterback, as always. Owen Luttrell, Jace Tarter, and Caden Seamster, your wide receivers. And then uh, your linemen, Canton Fitzmorris, Garrett Love, and Gus Thuston, along with Keaton Clark, who plays both ways. Defensively, defense-only players, I believe it's Cade Small, Landon Bilby, Cash Fitzmorris, all playing at the linebacker position. Hunter Anderson on the defensive line. We'll get the mo the replacement starters to you as soon as we can, uh, as soon as we know. But the truth is, I don't know. They're going to put out there uh, what young guys are going to get the start because of that. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Jordan Duncan, Elliot Stevenson also playing and starting at wide receiver. And we'll see some, uh, some action out of them as well. 0-3, Ulysses Tigers. They've got nine seniors by my count. Uh, they've had a struggle, struggling start so far this year at 0-3. We'll see what they can put together here after a long trip. I believe it's like eight or nine hours uh, from where they're from. So we'll see if they have any bus lag. Meanwhile, your Chanute Blue Comets, no matter who they put on the field, have to take care of business. They've pre they prepared for this. They're ready. The marching band's playing. The cheerleaders are cheering. The students are getting in the student section. Everything is ready for some Friday Night Lights, another edition, and uh, what a blessing that we get to be here to witness it, to call the action. As always, I am aided and carried by the Schnute Tech class that does all the work back here. Now, I'm not lying. This is all kids. All young people doing the producing. They're, they got the computer screens in front of them. They're learning the trade uh, from their instructor, Caleb Wood. And they do all the work, everything you're seeing, the instant replays, all of it done by high school students. And uh, without them, well, there wouldn't be a string uh, because I, did, I can't do it. All I can do is talk like an idiot and maybe try and call a football game. So they're carrying me tonight. So special thanks to them and everything you see. If you compliment uh, the stream on, on YouTube, on the, on the live chat, know that it's them that you should compliment, not, not any of us adults. 
Schnute High School versus Ulysses High School. Schnute at 2-1, and one, coming off a tough loss last week at Tonganoxie. Tonganoxie's a really good team. Had a great running back, and that's uh, they're, they're, they're going to have to regroup, battle through some injuries. Some guys are going to have to step up tonight, and we're here to watch it. Let's listen to the Schnute High School band and the Star Spangled Banner. Oh, 
Well, the fireworks are going off. The starting lineups are being introduced for the people and the folks in the crowd and the stadium here. The players are out. We're about to have our coin flip at midfield. It's an absolutely gorgeous night. And we're, we're right on the cusp of fall. Instead of 90 degrees, we're just under 80 degrees here at game time. We're working our way down to real football weather. And tonight should be a special game, should be a good one. We are ready to call it Schnoop Blue Comets. Your Schnoop Blue Comets versus the Ulysses High School Tigers from Ulysses, Kansas. We will have the, the starting kickoff right after this. We'll be back. Starting on defense for the Blue Comets, number three, Owen Lettrell. And the defensive back, another defensive back, number four, Jace Carter. Number five, Kate Simpson, senior. And number nine, Kate Small, junior. And a linebacker. Defensive back, number 20, senior, Jordan Gundel. And a defensive back, number 35, sophomore, Elliot Stevenson. Linebacker, number 44, Junior Landon Bilby. Linebacker, number 46, Senior Cash Fitzmore. And D Lyman, number 55, Junior Kent Fitzmore. And another defensive lineman, number 58, Senior Quentin Gregory. And number 63, defensive lineman Peyton Hurst. Four, Ulysses, number three, Christian Perez, number 51, Anthony Mendoza, number 54, Carmelo Orozco, and number 55, Carson Warner. For the Blue Comets, number four, junior, Jay Starter, number 20, that's going to be senior, Jordan Duncan, number 52, it's going to be senior, Hunter Anderson. And the Blue Comets will receive here to start the game. And we are just about to get underway in this high school football contest. Ulysses Tigers make their way out on the field to get this thing started. We'll try to get you the names of the guys that are subbing in for the injured players for Chanute as soon as I can figure that out. But bear with me, I'm on my own tonight. Seamster and Jalen Duncan back to receive the kickoff. The kicker for Ulysses, Jesus Rascon. He's a junior, also a running back. For the Ulysses Tigers. First thing you notice about Ulysses is they're a little undersized. Here's the kick. It's taken at the 17. Seamster working his way up the field out to his left and is going to get forced out of bounds across the 35 yard line. So good start as there's already some extra shoving, some extracurriculars on the sideline. There's boys being boys. You know how it is. Senior Kate Seamster on the return. So the first possession for the Schnoop Blue Comets will start at their 36. You see uh, Landon Bilby out there. I don't know that he usually starts, so I think he's one of your replacement players, and he's going to be out back there running back. So with the injury to Quentin Harding, it's Landon Bilby who gets the start, the junior. Linebacker now running back. Here's the give on the jet sweep to Seamster, and the defense is there to meet him. And he tries to fight his way out of it, but his gang tackled after a gain of a or a loss of one, excuse me. 
by Ulysses number 54. That's going to be Carmelo Orozco. It'll be a loss of two on the play. It's going to bring up second and 12. So it's going to be interesting to see how Chanute's offense adjusts without their workhorse running back, Quentin Hardy. It's Chris Hardy, the second, is your quarterback, as always. And it's Landon Bilby back with him at running back. Let's see what they dial up for second and long. Harding back to pass. Little out pattern to Seamster, who's tackled, wrapped up by the ankle and, and brought down. It was a good, uh, probably saved another five yards or so at least. But it's a pass and catch to Seamster. Makes his third down a little bit more doable. Elliot Stevenson runs out on the field as well as the quarterback with the play. That's going to bring up a third down and about six. Comments from their own 40-yard line. So a third and long six, maybe, for Chanute here on their first possession. Four wide receivers. Harding back to pass. Another little quick pass play to Seamster who catches it right at the sticks and is forced back. It's going to be close. The spot looks like it's going to be right on the line. I'm going to call it. I'm going to say it's a first down. And the ref says he agrees. First down, Chanute. Seamster got an inch or a centimeter more than he needed for the first down. And it's first and ten. A fresh set of downs for the Blue Comets. Jace Tarter on the near side here at receiver. Seamster in motion. Here's the give to Landon Bilby, who's hitting the backfield. Shakes off a tackler. Now tries to spin. Gets close to the 50-yard line. Maybe game two. Now, like I said, Ulysses is undersized, but Chanute is younger and smaller with the injury to two linemen. They're missing two linemen tonight, so a little less beef on the line. That's a gain of about two. Blue Comets after their own 49-yard line. Second and eight. Brings up second down and eight from their own 49 yard line. His first possession of the game. Blue Comets not in a hurry, very methodical. And Chris Harding, the second, waits for the snap. He's got it, and the give is to Landon Bilby, who's met in the backfield immediately. And so far, the patchwork offensive line is struggling just a tiny bit. Third down and 10 upcoming. Come out of the formation here. Trips to the far side. We'll see what the sophomore quarterback can manage here. Here is... The shotgun, he's waggling out to his right now, looking across the field and down the field. He's got a man open. Seamster, easy catch. 20, 10, 5, touchdown, Blue Comets. We got a flag on the field, though. Hold the phone. It's a 53-yard pass for a touchdown as it stands now. They're bringing it all back. It looked like it may be illegal man downfield. That is what they're calling. So they're going to send them back, and that's going to bring up a third down and even longer play. Well, Ulysses is saved from a big play. And now third and 15. So they'll try to do it all over again. Going under seven and a half here in the first quarter. Third and long. Here's Harding back to pass. He's looking. He's going to get rushed and going to get, oh, he escapes. Eh, he won't escape that one. Tried to spin away from the second guy as well, but he goes down with the sack and Schnute will be forced to punt from deep in their own territory. So 
first series report in is they look like they're missing some guys. They're going to have to try and figure it out. It's hard when you work as long as they have with the same unit and then you're missing some guys, but that's what you have to do in football. It happens to make up with injuries. Here's a high snap, but it's down in the punter's hands, and he gets, gets it off, but it's short and high, and it takes a chanute bounce inside the 40. It'll be down at the 36-and-a-half-yard line, and that's where Ulysses will have their first possession of the game. Well, so the first thing we notice with the injuries is some guys who don't usually play both ways are going to be playing both ways tonight. Landon Bilby gets the start at running back. Usually he's just out there on the field as the linebacker, but he's going to see double duty tonight. We'll see how that affects him as the night goes on. Also out there, Quentin Gregory, a senior, 6'2", 225. Andres Vargas out there as well, a freshman. So some younger guys out there because of the injuries. Here's Ulysses, first snap, and jumping on the line is Canton Fitzmorris. They're pointing at the, uh, the offensive player. It might be a false start. Let's see what the official says. It is offsides. The Tigers from Ulysses, Kansas, Western Kansas, the long trip to make here. Looking like they're running a similar style of offense, starting off in the shotgun here. Here is the snap after a hard count, the give to number 15. He's trying to find his way through, but not much running room. After the five-yard penalty, they're going to gain maybe another yard. A lot of guys there for Schnute, including Cash Fitzmorris. Called a gain of two. It's going to be second down and three. Let's with two wide on the near side here. Quarterback Preston Hiddle, the sophomore, gives to the running back, and he's met. Number nine, Cade Small, linebacker extraordinaire, makes the hit and the tackle. May have said the wrong name on the quarterback there. I believe it's Aiden Alvarado at quarterback. Running back for Ulysses is number 15, Joel Guadarrama. Third down and a long four. Tigers from their own 42 yard line. So third down and 40. Third down and four, excuse me. <laughs> Quarterback back to pass. Alvarado unloads. He overthrows his receiver as things were getting dicey in the pocket. That'll bring up fourth down. Wouldn't be surprised to see Ulysses go for it here. They're close to midfield on the road. Probably in their minds, a, a, an underdog, a big underdog. So we may see them go for it. But the quarterback is also the punter. So they can do a lot of, they have a lot of options here. Alvarado steps up into the quarterback shotgun position. We'll see if he backs up. Fourth down and a long four at their own 41. They are going to go for it. Nope, now he backs up. He is looking to pass. He's getting chased out of the pocket. He's going to have to get rid of it. Flag on the play. Wide open receiver caught down the field, but let's check that flag. Preston Hiddle with the catch. We may have a hold. That is in the position of holding in the backfield. 63 is beside himself. That's uh, Caden Bimes, and he looks like he's the one who's going to get caught. As we look at the replay, and yep. May have had a little tug at the jersey there, and that's going to send him back. So just like Chanute on third down, a third down conversion for Ulysses is brought back with a penalty. Holding charge 
They're going to have to move that bag. I don't, I don't know why there was maybe some deliberation. Surely they, they have to accept the penalty since the pass was caught down the field. Going to bring up fourth and 15. And we'll see what Aiden Alvarado does here. Again, he's the quarterback and the punter. So just because he's lined up back there doesn't necessarily mean they're going to go for this. Now backed up to their 31 or 2 yard line. He is in a quarterback type position though. Yep, he's going to pooch kick it. Little side punt kick and nobody back to return. This is going to take a couple bounces, a little roll there. And Schnute will take over on their own 22-yard line. We'll be back with their second possession right after this. We go through the defensive starters, Preston Hill, number two for So first and ten for Chanute, their second possession of the game. Safety number three, Christian. They continue to work with some younger players in there due to injuries. We'll see if they can get it figured out here on the second drive. Now Harding looking down the field towards Seamster, and he is going to not be able to come up with that one. That ball ended up out of bounds. Looked like Seamster would have had a shot at it, but sophomore quarterback Chris Harding just couldn't find him. Be second down and 10. So, so far, the Blue Comets have looked a little unsettled. But the big play possibility is always there for Chanute. Caden Seamster, a very accomplished wide receiver out there. We've already seen him do some damage early. One called back with penalty. This is going to be a procedure as we had a whole lot of movement on the offensive line. So Chanute looking a little rusty here. If we're being honest, there's the energy looks a little different. The body language, you can tell that there's some problems with unsuredness. Maybe with the Blue Comets right now as they try to figure this out. There's Chris Harding with the snap and the fake give. Now he's out. Quarterback scramble as he beats it to the outside and gets about six, seven yards. Run out of bounds. It's going to be a third and about eight. Comets. their own 25 yard line. Third down and eight upcoming. Right now, both teams finding themselves in third and longs. Trips to the far side, one receiver to the near side. Here's the snap, waggling out to the right. Here comes the rush. Harding going to have to get rid of it. Finds Caden Seamster, but he's going to be short of the first down. And finally... Shoved out of bound after a gain of about three or four. Then bring fourth down, and we'll see what Coach Frizzell decides to do here for Chanute. They're lining up like they're going to go for it. Fourth down and four. Four wide receivers. Seems they're in motion. And we have a defender jumping across the line, and this may give the Blue Comets a first down. It is offsides. That'll be a first down for Chanute. Well, so mistakes galore here in the first few minutes of the game. We'll see which team settles down first. Chanute out to their 34 now. Here's the snap and the give to Bilby. Bilby trying to get off the line there and moving the whole defense forward a couple yards. 
So gain of two for Landon. Landon Bilby on the run, hit it there by, initially by Tigers number 38, Jacob. The hole's not quite as big for the Chanute running backs tonight so far as we're missing two offensive linemen with injury tonight. Second down and eight. Harding back to pass, a little quick pass by the receiver, wasn't looking. Hit him in the back. So we got some miscommunication again and Blue Comets continue to struggle. Third down and eight. Seek out your favorite chess member or selling 50 50 cash drawing. As well as the baseball team, going to have a Comets game for cash at halftime. Shu comes out with trips so to the far side. They were going to go for it on the last fourth down. I see no reason why they wouldn't have two plays here. Harding back to pass. Here comes the rush. He's going to get flushed. He's going to scoot back farther, still avoid the rush, and elects to hold on to it and run it. And Somehow got some yards out of that as he danced down the sideline. Got a Ulysses player limping around back there. That's Roman Romero. I don't know if Ulysses has the type of numbers where they can really afford to be losing players. But number one limps off the field. In comes number 17, Julian Meraz, sophomore, to take his spot. Fourth down and two, Schnoot going for it, tight formation. It's a different running back in the backfield, but it is a quarterback sneak, and they push forward, and it looks like he's got the first with that old Philadelphia Eagle quarterback sneak. Where he just takes the snap, and then the two backs behind him just kind of push him forward. It's a first down. Enjoy that play while it lasts. I got a feeling that the Philadelphia Eagles have brought enough attention to that in the NFL that that play is going to start being illegal on down through the ranks. 4.30 to go here in the first quarter. Still 0-0. Got a different running back in the backfield now. Try to see who that is. Is number nine, Kate Small. Here's slant. To Caden Seamster, makes the man miss, now busts it to the outside. Back to the inside, good cut, spins, and is just tripped up inside the 30. A 17-yard pass play right there. So another big pass play to Caden Seamster, who's been pretty much the bulk of the offense when, they've, when he's gone to Caden. It's been a big play, one touchdown was called back. On the Ulysses Tiger 28 yard line. But now the Blue Comets are in business down to the Ulysses 28 yard line. First down and 10 after the big pass play. Harding gives to Landon Bilby. He tries to beat the defense to the outside. Now cuts it forward. Gets down to about the 26. Blue Comets will land in Bilby on the carry. Off a left tackle, good for a game of about two. That'll bring up a second and eight. Comets from the Tigers, 26 yard line. Second down and a short eight. Upcoming. Three wides this time. Maybe pulling in another guy to do some extra blocking for Schnoot. Seamster in motion. He is, him, is on the jet sweep now. Being patient. And saw an opportunity to get a couple and took it. And Ulysses holds Schnoot to now a third down play. Be third down and about six. Bring up about a third and five. The Comets on the Tiger. 24-yard. Call it third and a long five. Chris Harding jogging back in with the play. The sophomore quarterback. He's already thrown some good passes tonight. 
Bilby in the backfield with him. Four wide receivers. Ulysses defense creeping up to the line, but here comes the rush. Harding has to make a move just to get himself free. Uncorks one to the end zone. It's caught. Touchdown. Jace Tarter with a great catch. 24-yard touchdown pass. And catch from Chris Harding, the second to Jace Tarter with the sauce. And the Schnoo leads 6-0. We'll try to put the extra point through. Elliott Stevenson on for the extra point. There were all sorts of defensive players across the line. It doesn't matter. The extra point is up and through. And Chanute takes the lead 7 to 0. 209 to go in the first quarter. We'll be right back. Well, Schnoot takes the lead here in the first quarter. 2.09 left. 7-0 on their second possession. A pass and catch from Chris Harding, the second to junior Jace Tarter. It had been all Caden Seamster thus far, but Jace Tarter finds the back corner of the end zone, and Harding delivers the nice pass for six. And the extra point makes it 7-0. Schnoot, here's the kick. Stevenson kind of pooches it. Ends up going pretty deep, though, to the 10-yard line. Here comes the back for Ulysses, and he's going to be crowded and barely get across the 20. Ulysses will get their second opportunity on offense. Peyton Hurst for Schnoot jogs in. Canton Fitzmorris, Quentin Gregory, a lineman. Of course, Seamster, Jace Tarter. He just scored the touchdown. Now he's back in there at a cornerback position. This is offense, approaches the line. Welcome to all the Folks out in Western Kansas watching the stream, it's our pleasure to allow you to be able to watch your team for those that didn't get to make the trip. Here's a high snap, and it's a quarterback draw, and he's got some speed to the outside, running it down there. He's got a first down and more. Well, that's some good wheels by Aiden Alvarado, the junior quarterback. There's no doubt that that was a called running play as he immediately took off to his right. It's a good looking running play from the junior quarterback. First and 10 out to their 36. Now we got a stoppage in play as we're kind of looking around and someone may have an equipment problem. Number four, Jace Tarter comes off the field and out comes number six, Trevor Fields. Alvarado and Guadarrama in the backfield for Ulysses. Tight formation, no receivers. Now it's another quarterback running play and a flag comes down. This is probably going to be something to do with the formation. We'll see what, that, what the call is here. It was an interesting formation. They, they did have three receivers. That's actually a holding call. So that, that flag came in there pretty quick after the snap of the ball. We'll see if we can see it on the replay. Now yeah, the play moved too quick. But a holding is the call, and that's going to move him back. So 
So it's going to be first and 20 for Ulysses as we go under a minute to play here in the first quarter. So back-to-back -back quarterback running plays. Ulysses up to the line. This time the receivers were will be out wide. Trips to the far side. It's Alvarado awaits the snap. The give. Nope. It's a play action fake. Pass to the outside. It's caught. Little pitch and catch. But the Schnute defense is there to stop him after a gain of a few. Landon Bilby among others. Caden Seamster out there. In on the tackle. Julian Bring up second down and long. Be brought down in, in there by Seamster and Jordan. Ten seconds to go in the first quarter. We'll see if they get another playoff here. Alvarado does get the snap. It is a quarterback run play. Boy, he's got nowhere to go. He reverses field, but the Chanute defense is there. He may have got a yard with that cutback. It's a smart play by the quarterback to get that yard back where there was nothing there. That is the end of the first quarter. Schnoot leads at 7-0. to zero. We'll be back with a long third down play right after this. Third down and 15 upcoming for Aiden Alvarado and company. The Schnute defense will try to get that, get them off the field. Alvarado turns and takes a peek at the play clock. Plenty of time on that. Now gets ready for the snap. There's some movement on the line, but couldn't see who it was. Alvarado out to his right to make a pass, and it's down the field. And even if that one was caught, they were going to struggle to get much yardage out of that. That brings them fourth down and long. Well, no one coming on the field for Ulysses, but that's not strange. Aiden Alvarado is the punter and the quarterback. And he quick kicked the last one from a pretty normal looking offensive formation. He didn't even take a couple steps back or anything. So that's what I would expect to see here. He is behind the running back. And a Chanute defensive player comes busting across the line like me at the dinner table. And say, wait, you gotta pray first. You gotta say grace. And in this case, you got to wait for the snap. So five-yard penalty brings up fourth down and 10 to move Ulysses a little closer. I would ex still expect a punt here, but we'll see. Moves it up to their own 36-yard line. Another hard count by Alvarado. This time, the Shnu players stay put. And we got a timeout by Ulysses. Timeout, Tiger. We'll keep it right here. They probably not much room for error if Ulysses wants to win this game, to have a chance to win this game. So they're probably going to talk this over 
Fourth down and 10 from their own 36. Schnute has been kind of hit and miss, a little inconsistent on offense, but they've shown a capability for a big play. Maybe Ulysses thinks here, we gotta, we gotta take some chances here early to try and keep in this game and keep the pressure on the Blue Comets. We'll see what they decide to do after this timeout. So far, from the Blue Comet side of things, dealing with some injuries. You got some younger guys in there. Some mistakes have been happening. It's, it's looked a little, a little iffy at times. But they've been moving the ball. And they lead it seven to nothing. Out comes the Tiger offense. This time the quarterback is a lot farther back. He's probably a couple yards farther back here. So this seems to indicate this will probably be a punt. Now he scoots a little bit closer. Fourth down and 10. Here's the snap. It is a quick kick. Oh, it's a good one. Nice punt. That one sails down to the 20, takes a bounce all the way down to the Chanute 10 yard line. That is a, that's an incredible punt by Alvarado. And Schnute's offense, which I said has been a little, little scuff, scuffling just a bit. Now we'll see what they do backed up to their 10 yard line. They haven't been able to open up the usual running lanes. They got two linemen out tonight. So that's a big punt from the Tigers. Blue Comet offense comes running out on the field. Big 77, Brady Alonzo, sophomore offensive lineman. Is Landon Bilby out at running back. We've seen Cade Small a few times from that running back position. Let's see what Coach Frizzell dials up here on play number one. Here's the snap and the fake on the jet sweep. Bilby makes a move and tries to turn it upfield and does manage to sneak through the line, get a couple yards. But thus far, that has been kind of the pattern. Is Landon has to make a move and try to carry a guy for two, two, three yards. A gain of two there makes it second down and eight. So, so far, the Ulysses defense has been up to the challenge of stopping the run. It's been the pass that has caused them some problems. We'll see what Schnee elects to do here. Here's a slant play to caught by number six as he spins and carries a couple defenders. That's Trevor Fields, the junior wide receiver. Ball delivered well. Well, Ulysses giving those receivers a lot of, loom, a lot of room on the line. They don't want to get beat deep and Chris Harding just picking his spots there underneath the defense. Moves them up to their own 34 so they get out of the shadow of their own end zone. First and 10. Harding turns, gives to Landon Bilby, who takes a shot and still somehow falls forward for a gain of one, maybe even two yards, while the Ulysses player shot through the line, and as soon as Landon took the handoff, he got plastered. Carried him and ran him over. That's some tough running by Bilby, and as we said, that's it's kind of been the pattern so far here early, but... To Chanute's credit, they're sticking with the, the consistency of trying to run that ball. Here's Harding. This time a little pitch out to the wide receiver, but we get a whistle and a stoppage of play. And it's going to be a procedure call on Chanute. So that'll move him back five yards, and they'll replay second down. Nine forty-six to go here in the first half. It's been a interesting first half. Chanute dealing with some injuries. Ulysses already a, a smallish squad. 
But they've been holding their own as well as they can, trying to stifle what is usually a pretty high-powered Schnute offense. Second down and 13. Harding has four wide receivers. Here's the snap. It's a pass on a little out play, but it's just over the leaping hands of number 23, Taylon Haynes. So third down and long. That one was just a floated a little bit up for Chris Harding, but his passes have looked pretty good tonight. They haven't asked him to do a whole lot, and when they've asked him to go deep, he's hit his receivers. We'll have to go somewhat deepish here. Here comes the rush for Ulysses. Harding unloads. He's got a man down the field, but he underthrows it, and it's picked off by the Tigers. We got a flag down. We'll see what this flag is. It's going to be pass interference on Ulysses. Well, that is a back-breaking play for that defense. We'll see what that is in the replay. I don't think it was the guy that got the interception. It might have been one of the other defensive players. Let's see if we can see it on the replay. is pass interference nonetheless on the defense and will result in an automatic first down for Chanute. So again, it's mistakes that have plagued both teams, but in more key situations for the Ulysses Tigers. And a fresh set of downs for Chanute. Four wide receivers. Trevor Fields over here on the near side. Here's the snap and a short pitch and catch to Trevor. And he's close to a first down on a gain of about eight. Second down and three. Let's we'll see what the Blue Comets dial up here. Right, here's that previous play. We'll see if we can see the pass interference. Oh, yeah, there must have been some contact there with number 43 and Caden Seamster. Second down and three. Harding back to pass, but whistles stop it again, and we're going to have another procedure call. Well, so far, this game has been uglier than a junkyard dog. Now we have a timeout. We'll take it with them. I think everyone needs a timeout. 8.48 to go in the first half. It's 7-0, Chanute. We'll be right back. Back for the second down play. Second down and seven. Four wide receivers. Landon Bilby in the backfield with Chris Harding. Snap goes to Harding. It's a quick pass and catch. Did he catch it? Yes. That was a good shoestring catch, but Ulysses' defense was right there and manages to hold him to a couple. 
It's going to bring up third down and about four. That was a good catch by Tarter. Took that off his shoestrings. Bring up a third and four. Thomas on the Tiger 48 yard line. This is probably four down territory for Chanute. So they've got two plays to get four yards. Wonder if we'll see some type of run here. They don't, they haven't run many quarterback draws this year. Something that was usually a staple. Here's a play action fake and a pitch and catch out to Elliott Stevenson. Cuts it back to the inside, still on his feet. Now he's gonna pick up some blockers, turn it down the field. He's pulled down from behind. That's good individual effort right there by Elliott. As he just wasn't gonna go down. And it's first down on the catch and run by Elliott Stevenson. Elliott is a large body out there, wide receiver, six foot two, 190 pounds. It's first down and 10 from the Ulysses 32. Here's Harding. Now a little throw out to the receiver, Trevor Fields. Not much room. Gained maybe a yard. Second down upcoming. Cade Small re-enters the game. Elliott Stevenson just had that great run after the catch comes out. Landon Bilby, the running back. On second down along, we'll see if he gets it. Here's Harding. The give is to Landon, who's got a hole on the right side and a burst. Well, that was the first time he had some space. And you see the burst by the junior. He's just tripped up, otherwise that was a long game. It's good blocking and a big hole, but a nice play by the linebacker there. I couldn't quite see his number. Maybe Jacob Gonzalez. He maybe saved the touchdown. Brings up third and three for Schnute. Caden Seamster in motion, and that one Looked a little herky-jerky, but they get the ball to Seamster, and he turns something out of it. It's probably going to be a first down from the looks of it. Looked like that snap was just ever so slightly late. Oof. It was quick, but it was there when it needed to be, and jet sweep happens. First down, Schnoot. Four wide receivers on first down from the Ulysses 21. Harding, back to pass, looking, looking, throws one out over the middle, a little bit behind his receiver, and it's incomplete. J Jace Tarter almost managed to come up with that grab. Ulysses has managed to hold their own at times on defense here. I said from the look of it, they're awfully undersized. I don't have weights on their roster. But just from the eye test, they, they look smaller. Second down and 10. Seamster in motion. The fake on the jet sweep, and it's almost picked off. What a great play by one of those linebackers out there. That was Joel Guadarrama. It's Harding. Just kind of thought, well, maybe lost track of him, and the middle linebacker eased his way to his right and almost had a what would have been in danger of being a pick six. Third down and 10 as it stands. Right 
Trips to the near side for the Blue Comets. Harding back to pass. He waggles to his right. He's looking down the field. Has good blocking. Has a man caught at the 11. It's going to be just short. Uh, no, actually, that's going to be a first down. Elliot Stevenson, his second grab of the night. And a big one. Said he was a big body. He's a big target. Both him and Seamster are big targets out there for sophomore quarterback Chris Harding. Now... It'll be first and goal from the 10. Trips to the near side again. Same formation. We'll see what Harding does here. He's back to pass. He's looking. He's got time now. He's flushed out of the pocket. Resets. Now looks to the corner, and it's knocked away. Great individual effort by the Ulysses defender, number two, Preston Hiddle. I think when, uh, when they see that on the video, if Harding lays it out a little farther into the corner, that might have been, might have been a touchdown. But even without that, it took an outstanding individual effort by Hiddle to break that pass up. Second and goal. Crowd urging on the Blue Comets to score, and to score again. Here's a pass to the back shoulder, but a whistle stops play. And it's a timeout. Ulysses calls the timeout before the play starts. We'll keep it right here. Schnoot marching down the field, looking for their second score of the game. It's been a rough one. Some injuries for Schnoot and... Some younger guys having to step up into the lineup, and it's looked a little herky-jerky at times. But the players that you would expect to step up have stepped up for the Blue Comets. Caden Seamster has been all over the place on offense. Jace Tarter caught a touchdown pass earlier off a great throw by Chris Harding the second. Schnoot trying to find their way without their outstanding running back, Quentin Hardy. Landon Bilby got the start at running back. Hasn't found a lot of room as the line tries to open up holes for him. Second down and goal upcoming from the 10. Trips to the far side. Tarter, Seamster, and Elliott Stevenson. Harding with Bilby beside him. Here's the snap. Harding out to his left and looks just out of the reach of Elliott Stevenson. Incomplete. It's pretty good coverage by the Tigers. And Harding put that in a place where only Elliott could get to it. But just couldn't corral it. Third down and goal from the 10. Third and goal. It was a safe, safe pass there from Chris. It's a little bit more difficult in this area of the field. Things get a little bit more compact. The lanes to throw in a little thinner. We'll see how they elect to move forward here. We mentioned those big bodies as targets. You got Stevenson and Seamster standing right next to each other. We'll see if Harding goes that direction. He is looking that way. Now uncorks one to the end zone. It's a jump ball, and it's incomplete. Well, good defense there again by number 15, Joel Guadarrama. And out comes the Chanute Blue Comet Fugal unit. We're looking at about a 17, excuse me, a 27-yard field goal. We'll get a replay of that pass. And yeah, he put it up high. Defender just made a good read on the ball. Here's the kick, and it is no good. 
And so Ulysses pumped up on their sideline as they sense the scuffling nature of this game. The longer they can stick around, especially going into halftime, the more momentum that they stand to, to, to acquire. On a missed field goal, they move the ball out to the 20. So as not to uh, penalize the defense for making a stop. That's where Ulysses' offense will take over. Aiden Alvarado, the junior quarterback, has shown his speed. We'll see if they can mount a drive here against Chanute's defense. Here is a designed run play by the quarterback, and Alvarado is met. Carries the pile, though, moves forward for a gain of a four. Before the Schnute defense can get him down. A well, massive humanity on the ground there as they try to get everyone unpiled. Keaton Clark into the game. Now comes Peyton Hurst. Second down of five. After the gain of five by Aiden Alvarado. Under four to go now here in the first half. Ulysses not moving with any sort of urgency, but the clock continues to tick. Now Alvarado back to pass. And Corks over the middle in the air. And oh, it falls to the turf. Well, that was... A near disaster for Ulysses, who's trying to hold on to some momentum here. That that ball went careening up in the air off of the hands of the receiver. That stops the clock at 3.30 to go in the first half. Third down, pretty large third down play here. Ulysses wants to grab more of that momentum. Schnute wants to get the ball back. Oh, some movement up on the line. They managed to stay on sides, but Alvarado out of the pocket, had nowhere to go with it, and just throws that one into the turf. That's going to bring up fourth down. Clock stops again at 326. That'll be a fourth. So Ulysses has utilized the quick kick on these fourth downs. Would expect to see that here again. But when it's the quarterback is your punter, there's always the chance, the option for something tricky here. We'll see what Alvarado does with it. He's got the snap and he's out. He's looking out to his wide. Now he's I think he wanted to punt it, but he didn't have enough room. And now it corks one, and it falls to the turf. Well, that was a smart play by the Chanute defense, as I think someone could have picked that off, and he lets it fall to the turf because he knew they would get those yards back. Well, that's where that little trickiness doesn't pay off for Ulysses as the quarterback. I think he wanted to punt it there. He just didn't have enough room. The pursuit of the Chanute defense was coming on him pretty quick, and he wouldn't have been able to get that kick away. You don't see many pass punt option plays, but I think that was one. And it results in an incomplete pass and a turnover on downs. And we'll see if Chanute can capitalize here with 3.18 to go here in the first half. Man in motion is... Seamster, the fake of the jet sweep. Here's Bilby with a big hole up the middle. Makes the referee miss. Couple moves, and he breaks free for the 25-yard touchdown. Landon Dalla Bilby. Well, there's a big run, and finally he'd been getting a little bit more space. Well, he may have gotten too much space. We'll see what the we'll see what the, the call is as the flag is on the field. Coming back. Oh my. It is a, he called a block in the back. Well, that was interesting. I don't know that 
that impacted the play. So if that is the call, then that is a very unfortunate turn of events for Schnute. And again, that's two touchdown plays called back by penalty here for Schnute. That happens so far down the field, it's they basically only lose one yard. It's first down and 11, essentially. Owen Luttrell out here on the near side. Now another receiver joins him. Harding, turn the give to Bilby, who's got a lot of room around the left side this time. Carrying defenders, hard running down to the 10. The ball may have come out there as players are diving all over the place. And it is a fumble and a recovery by Ulysses. Bilby had a good run and was carrying defenders. And boy, the ball just popped out there. Looked like it was a fumble. Ball comes loose. Going to be a turnover. Will be a first and ten. Ulysses. Just outside their own ten yard line. Another. Key mistake for Schnute. Leads to a turnover. And Ulysses has the ball back down 7-0 with 3.03 to go. So a couple changes of possession in less than 30 seconds. Here's Alvarado with the run to the outside. He takes the hit and keeps running. Gained maybe about eight yards or so. We're gonna call it seven. He went out of bounds. That stops the clock. 2.57 to go. Both teams have two timeouts. It was an interesting scenario right now. Is someone's going to grab some momentum here before the half, and we just don't know who it's going to be yet. It's out there for someone to grab. It's now Ulysses' turn. Now we have another flag. This is going to be offsides on Schnude. Well, if these officials are getting paid by the flag, we're going to need a, another W-2 with some bigger numbers on it. Because the yellow has been all over the place tonight here in the first half. I mean, when you're living this good, these guys are going to Arby's after the game. First down and 10. Alvarado again on the design run to his right, and again, he's about five yards down the field before first contact. So that play has been the most consistent play for the Tigers tonight. Clock continues to run here, and I mentioned this in their last possession. Ulysses not too uh, not too eager to hurry up in any way. They're just kind of running their normal offense as the play clock goes under 10 here. Second down and six from their own 28. Maybe just comfortable with just having the ball and watching the clock tick down. After a gain of a few yards here. And the clock continues to tick, so Ulysses may be just comfortable saying, hey, we're only down 7 nothing. We've come a long way. Maybe we just hold on to the ball here. It is third down and one, so they need to get a yard. Keep this drive going and keep the ball out of Schnute's hands. Aiden Alvarado turns to check the play clock. Hard count. No one jumps. Here is a oh, little trick play. Toss forward, little shovel pass to the receiver coming the other direction. A little misdirection play, and he's going to be close, but I don't think he got it. 
Uh, they say yes. First down. Okay. Well, no measurement needed. So first down 10, but the clock continues to roll. We'll see if they try to loosen up the playbook a little bit as we go under a minute. Alvarado in the shotgun. Hard count again. Here's the snap. It is again that quarterback design run play. He makes a turn up the middle and gets a first down, carrying Schnute defenders out near the 50. So the clock stops on the first down as they hurry back to the line. Now there's a little urgency as they sense they might be able to get closer to the goal line here, but now they only have 38 seconds as the clock winds here as it begins counting again. Alvarado up with the snap. Now he's back to pass, looking, forced out of the pocket, steps up. Now he's got to run it, tucks it, and the defense is there. I would imagine this is going to result in a Ulysses timeout. Oh, no, the clock continues to tick. Tigers hurry back to the line. We're down to 13 seconds. And now, finally, a timeout. Well, some precious seconds went off the clock there for the Tigers, but they get the timeout with 12 seconds left and facing a second down from the Chanute 47-and-a-half-yard line. We'll keep it right here. It was an interesting game management there for Ulysses, and I don't know if they just didn't want to risk anything. They are probably be trying to play it safe, but then they realized, hey, we're around midfield. Maybe, maybe we, maybe just maybe we try to conserve some time now. I know they didn't want to give it back. There were two, there were two changes of possession within 30 seconds, so I can see the need and the want to play it safe there, but. Ulysses, who's been on the bottom side of some lopsided games in their first three, probably is happy to go, to in, go into halftime, go in the locker room, just down 7-0. Chanute, meanwhile, who has looked impressive at times here in the early seasons, dealing with some injuries. A lot of guys having to step up and play tonight in different positions. And the last one, the last four digits are 1, 2, 6, 4. Bring on up to the press box. We'll see what Ulysses elects to do here. They got trips on the far side. They do have one timeout left, so a pass to the middle of the field could work for them. Alvarado's using that hard count again. Now he's flushed out of the pocket, running to his right. He's going to try and get to the sideline, and he does. He has the first down, but now down to six seconds, and we're probably in a scenario where you've only got one play. Actually, they say he stepped out of bounds just short of the first down. That doesn't matter. With six seconds to go here in the first half. Now we're going to have a timeout for, Ch for Chanute. They want to talk it over. They had a their entire defense back around the 20. We'll take a timeout with them. The last play of the first half coming up. We'll be right back. You're watching Comet Vision. What is likely to be the last play of the first half? It's been a, it's been a forgettable one. Hasn't been pretty, but Schnute leads it seven to nothing. But they need to weather one more play from Ulysses. The Tigers will have one shot here from the Schnute 43. Schnute has five defenders standing back at their own 10-yard line in a hail mary defense here. 
One, two, six, four, come on up to the press box. We'll see what kind of arm Alvarado has here. He wouldn't, wouldn't be surprised to see some sort of draw play either. He's been the main source of their offense, has Aiden Alvarado with his legs. Here's the snap. He is back to pass, and it is. Well, he did think about running. Now he's flushed out to his left. It's going to have to throw across his body. This one's up for grabs and way short. It's going to hit the turf. That's going to be the end of the first half. Well, it's halftime. Schnute leads 7-0, and that's something. Stick around. Your Blue Pride Schnute marching band coming up at halftime. Also performance by the cheerleaders. We'll have that for you right here in Commavision and the second half after this.
from Family Opera.
Ladies and gentlemen, you all need to direct your attention to the south goal line. Not the figure. But here they go. Blue Comet. Community National Back Kick for Cash. You will see Tyson, Kingster, and Lawrence King. Kicking for his core. Mother, JC, apparently put off an injured reserve. Tyson Feaster and Lawrence Cheney. First up, looks like we have Tyson, Coach Dollar. All right, top fans, get it cheered on. You got to put it through the upright against the wind. You're going to have to blow hard. Tyson. 
Got a hundred dollar seat note on the line. And if I'm Dan Milton on Community National Bank, I'm sweating right now. Ball in place. Tenderly on the five-yard line. Looks like King is up to bat. And behind him come the fans. What a boom! What a boom! A collective boom! Just on the bottom bar. Close! A boom! All right, ladies and gentlemen. He's warming up. That's not a whiff. And here comes Tyson Kingsford to get behind him. Kaboom! And it's good! Tyson Kingsford puts it through the upright. Now we go back for one more. Lawrence Cheney at the velocity of a bullet. Behind that last one. Get behind him, Blue Dog fan. See if he can put it through. He's got the strength to carry the hill. Kaboom! Carried it. What's the call, Robert? I guess it's good. Good job! Team Super number two. Kaboom! Yeah. <laughs> and it's good! We've got a couple of winners for golf. Get the tag. Give it up for Tyson Zeuser. Lawrence Jay. Hi, guys. Is that probably $10,000? I don't know. Okay. It's a great job, guys. I know the $100 was in there somewhere. We hope you enjoyed the halftime festivities. Here at Chanute High School Sports Complex. The Blue Comets receive the ball in the first half, so they'll kick to Ulysses, leading seven to nothing. It's a surprising result, but not quite what was expected, I'm sure, by Chanute fans. But lots of injuries for the Blue Comets have resulted in a first half that was a little interesting. Well, that ball is going to roll out of bounds. That ball takes a weird bounce and somehow stays inbounds. That was going to be trouble, but as it is, ball falls out of bounds. It'll be first down from the 40 or the 35. Joined by Caleb Wood this half. I'm here. You are. There's a lot of stairs getting up here. <laughs> Yeah, I don't do stairs. <laughs> so it'll be first and 10 from the 35 for Ulysses. Ulysses Tigers from their own 35 yard line. It's kind of the same situation that we ended the first half with where Ulysses with an opportunity to try and grab some momentum here. They played it really safe at the end of the first half, but held on to the ball and ran the clock out essentially. Alvarado, the quarterback, gives the handoff to number 15, who's wrapped up immediately by Cade Small and brought down at the line of scrimmage. Maybe lost a half a yard. Yeah, absolutely. Kate Small getting in there, doing a great job. Real quick off the line, there, um, uh, really 
uh, aware of the situation that he gets in with wrapping up that uh, running back there. And you see, even saw him trying to strip the ball, trying to do something, make some early on momentum for Chanute here. It'll be interesting to see if this game remains close. What the uh, what the the playmakers start trying to do a little bit extra. Sometimes that can lead to some mistakes. We'll see what happens. Alvarado with the designed run play following a blocker and pushes the file forward, the pile forward for a game of about five. Schnute defense really struggling here, um, both first half obviously and, and and here in the early on in the second half, just trying to shed blockers there, really making holes for Alvarado. Um, Ulysses is doing a great job there, offensive lineman pulling uh, and, and really finding uh, somebody on the defense to knock out of the way. Brings up third and five. Here's the snap, Alvarado, here comes the rush. He's gonna have to step up in the pocket. He's got some room and keeps his feet underneath him and dives forward towards the 50. That's gonna be a first down for the Tigers. Boy, when he turns on the Jets, he can get going. Yeah, he's got some wheels. He showed them off in the first half. That's, I mean, largely been their offense, have been the legs of Aiden Alvarado. And the Schnupel Comets have, they've not played bad defensively. And they've kept that, obviously, they've, the, the shutout is on the board, but at times it seems like Ulysses may be able to go to that play even more than they have. Alvarado in the shotgun, Hiddle out wide. Blue Comets look for an answer on defense here. Here's Alvarado again. Boy, it looked like the receiver was maybe expecting some sort of option out there, but Alvarado does it again with his legs in a good game. Yeah. You almost wonder where the outside linebackers in that whole situation, you know, Alvarado was able to get one, two yards upfield and then continue running horizontally with the line of scrimmage, obviously on the uh, upper side of the line of scrimmage until he could find that new gap opening up. And sure enough, gains a good five, six, seven yards on the play. I'm not sure if the receiver, if there was an option to pitch to the receiver there. He certainly thought there was an option Interesting to play call for sure. <laughs> Look like look like me playing pickup basketball. It's like you you want to pass to me? You might it's okay pass if you don't. <laughs> I, I can shoot from here. So second down and short, and the official already waving his hands in the air like he just doesn't care. I'm not sure what the stoppage is about. We're gonna have a a clock fix maybe. Well, everybody, everybody's looking at the box. <laughs> they got the message relayed up here. I don't know. We couldn't hear anything. There you go. 9.24 on the clock. Seven seconds. Second down and three. Ulysses on the Chanute half of the field. Here's the snap and the give to... The running back as he powers forward for near a first down. Boy, I tell you what, when Ulysses pulls their guys across uh, the lane there, they, they really send quite a few kids. I think on that turn there, they had at least two different guys pulling, whether that was a guard and almost like a tight end. I, I, I didn't quite see that, but they're really wanting to blow up that line and make huge gaps there for their running backs. It's a simple game plan, Caleb, but it's working. It is. And the body language, you, there's kind of a bounce to the step of Ulysses right now. The body language for Chanute isn't looking so good. First and 10, Alvarado with the snap and the give to Guadarrama again, and maybe got a couple on that play. This time the Chanute defense is up to the task. That was number 63, Peyton Hurst who's at the bottom of that pile. You know, before the game today, there's been a lot of question on the legitimacy and even just the the technical talents of Ulysses going into this. And I, I, I can't help but wonder if Chanute 
had it in their mind that, hey, this is going to be an easy game. Just a, a Western Kansas team coming to Southeast Kansas. It'll be easy. Sure enough, not so much. Second down and eight. And the Schnu defense uh, staring down a test right now. Here's Alvarado with a picking his way forward and another good gain by the Ulysses quarterback. Big block there. Alvarado giving Alvarado a second, second breath of fresh air, not getting sacked that far behind the line of scrimmage. I mean, if I had to describe Chanute's body language right now, I would just use the word doubt. Yeah. There seems to be doubt in the mind right now. And like we said, there's there's some injuries, and it's it's been kind of tough sledding so far. Well, and you hate to put that much reliance on a handful of kids on your team that it, it – takes an effect on your entire team like this. So third down and three. Alvarado back to pass. We'll see if he tucks it. No, this time they plug up the middle and uncorks one down the field. It's over the head of the receiver, number 17, Julian Mraz. It hit him in the hands, but it would have been a tough catch. Mm. That brings up an interesting play, fourth and three. And again, Ulysses kind of staring down this, this moment of the opportunity is there to grab the, the, the momentum. Will the Chinook defense be able to stuff them? Kind of a big play this early in the second half. Watch the hard count here. They've gotten Chinook to jump off sides a couple of times. There it is. Nobody jumps. Here's the snap. Alvarado with that design run play. Now looking for a way forward. Breaks it back to the middle and is going to pick up the first down on that cutback. Boy, way too many Chanute bodies bouncing off the, the quarterback here. Not wrapping up. Not really getting any kind of grip on him. And Alvarado just slips past three guys before even being wrapped up and taken down here. Does a great job of staying on his feet and, and really just pushing his legs. There were a lot of defenders to the right of Alvarado there. Yeah. You wonder how that happens. Um, maybe when things are going rough, this is when it's a true test of the faith in your teammates, staying home, staying in your spot. First and 10 for the Tigers. There's the snap. And the quarterback will keep it after the fake. He's looking to throw it. Now he's got nowhere to go. And... Oh, boy, almost escaped, but there's just mm. too many blue comets there, and he's going to lose a couple. Small and shifty, though. I feel like just about any other quarterback we've played so far this season would have gotten take down, taken down much sooner, but Alvarado, very quick, very nimble on his feet, was able to, I mean, spare himself a couple seconds, not necessarily a few yards, but, you know, still doing a little something for him. Well, he's done, done just about everything for the Tigers here tonight. Ulysses, on the city 30 yards a reason that they are moving the ball right now. I tell you what, though, Ulysses' offensive line, although they're not super tall, they got some pretty hefty guys on the on their uh, front line. So three receivers to the far side for the Tigers. And here is another designed quarterback run as he tries to follow his running back and does manage to be patient and going to get about five yards out of it. Well, there's two different kinds of play they've run. There's the one where he just takes off running off the sprint, and he's not waiting. And then there's that one where it's a little more patient. It takes a while to develop, and he stays behind his running back, Guadarrama, who's blocking for him. Well, and, and that's got to be tough as a defense. Do you let him sit back and potentially pass the ball, or do you give him pressure and risk him outrunning you? And the interesting thing now is, is this is a pretty long drive. We're about to go under five minutes here in the third quarter. This is still the first drive of the second half. Slow and steady. Third down and six, and Ulysses has done exactly what they want to do, hold on to the ball here. Here's a pass that's way over the head of the receiver and almost picked off. And now it's an interesting decision for Ulysses. Certain to go for it, but what play do you call? This is a fourth and six. It seems like that quarterback sprint has kind of been good for about five yards, but. Yeah, I mean, you know, he's really taken advantage of, you know, having those three outs, um, maybe having a guard pull and, and having those guards 
run off the outside linebacker and some defensive backs and, and really having some field uh, to be able to make a move or two. Oh, wait a minute. Well, oh. here's the development. Apparently, Ulysses has a lot of confidence in their field goal kicker. This is a 41-yard field goal attempt. The snap is high. They get it down. It's blocked. Now the shoot defenders kind of wrestle over it and Field goal was partially blocked, and Schnute will take over. Now, I will say, you know, aside from that field goal attempt being blocked, um, during during pregame today, their field goal kicker was hitting some uh, 40, close to 50-yard field goals in, in warm-ups. So um, I, I can completely understand their confidence in their kicker here. Putting some, you know, attempting to just put some points up on the board is, is better than yeah, what yeah, just happened definitely. now? I was just surprised. You don't usually see a lot of high school teams in 4A with, uh, with, with a kicker that's good enough to have confidence. Say, hey, send him out there for the 40-yarder. And with this wind, I mean, it's it's pretty windy, right to left kind of wind that he was facing there. Absolutely. Yeah, Cleet Frizzell here talking to his offense. You really, you really wonder what it is that he needs to say to these guys to get to get them going. Yeah, it's really a rhythm thing, I think, too. It's not that, uh, like, like, look, all due respect to Ulysses. They've played, they played great. But Chanute's offense should be doing a little bit more. It's just, like, well, plays like this, a snap over the head, and Chris Harding's going to have to uncork one, and, boy, he had some guys open somehow, some way. I mean, smart move, though, you know. In a, in a time of panic, it's better to overthrow your guys than there's a flag in the end zone. If that's holding, then it's a safety. And boy, the parade of mistakes continues to haunt the Blue Comets here tonight. The officials are going to get over and talk to talk this over. I don't know what this this I don't know what this is. If it's not holding, it could be roughing the quarterback. I suppose it is roughing the quarterback. Wow! What an what a huge call. This is like a. This is like the autobiography of my twenties. Like, am I going to stop being able to shooting myself in the foot here, or? Yeah, I'm not exactly sure how. Uh, how Ulysses is quarterback, or sorry, their coaches uh, would have thought that would have been any kind of safety. You know, Chris Harding didn't go down by any means. He did a great job of staying on his feet, scooping that up, and doing something with it. Uh, again, in, in this case, a panic. He he threw it away to uh, prevent the loss of yards. At least, so. Well, a disastrous play for the Ulysses defense is Chanute's game. So first and ten out on the 26-yard line now with a little breathing room. And the coach for Ulysses is having an animated discussion with the official. He takes a little jaunt down the sidelines to cool off. Yes, Seamster by himself down near side. Harding lets one go. It's up for grabs, and Seamster, it's not a bad target for the jump ball, but he was double covered and never really had a shot at it. In all honesty, Seamster probably could have gotten away with, you know, jumping a little early and picking up that pass interference there, but um, unfortunately wasn't able to see that at the time. Yeah, it looks like he's had some trouble catching the, uh, spotting the ball in the air right. a couple times tonight. Well, and it's been a, I think it's been a couple of things. You know, between that, because I'm I'm sure Ulysses has been watching film, knowing that Seamster is a, a huge asset to the offense. Uh, but at the same time, you know, Chris Harding has been struggling a little bit as well with overthrowing his receivers a bit. Um, you know, just being young quarterback, making young mistakes. Second down and ten, four wide receivers. Here's Harding and. The give to Landon Bilby, who started to find some room at the end of the first half, and this time has a good gain on second down. We'll make it third and short. Er. So Landon was just starting to find some openings and had a crucial fumble there at the end of the first half. And he had that uh, touchdown run that got called back unfortunately as well you know those can be dampers to your momentum as a team and let alone an individual yeah two called back two called that's back. right so third down and three here is the quick 
pass he's going to have to beat a man. It's Elliot. He got a piece of the face mask. He doesn't face him. And Elliot Stevenson with a good individual effort again for the second time tonight. I tell you what, Elliot Stevenson can be kind of a scary athlete out there. He's he's a relatively tall kid, uh, standing about 6'1", 6'2"-ish, uh, also weighing a good 170 pounds, but he's also extremely quick on his feet. Uh, you know, as a, as a defender, one, you got to know that's going to hurt if you run into a kid his size. But at the same time, he's super quick, super agile, great asset for Chanute Blue Comet offense. It shows you the confidence they have in him as a young guy to say, hey, we're going to pass you the ball in a position where you're going to have to make something happen. And he did. The play is whistled dead on this land and Bilby run, and it's another illegal procedure call on the Blue Comets. So Stevenson, just a sophomore. Yeah. Some Actually, I think that's written down wrong. I'm pretty sure he's a junior. Yeah, because he was a sophomore last year. Okay. It helps being a teacher. Yeah, it does. I just got the roster, man. I got to go with what's in front of me. Well, I, I fact know, check. I, I know Elliot, but I don't know. I don't know what grade they're in. Yes, he's a, Elliot is a junior. Okay, junior wide receiver. Got to fix that roster. And he's honestly, he's got a, a great high school career ahead of him, both in basketball and football and track. He's, he's a great track runner as well. Here's another quick pass to Seamster who has to make a man miss. And now he's got some room down the sideline. What a play by Seamster. That is going to be wow. a 65 yard touchdown run after the catch. He's going to make. It's going to make Chris's stats look good on the pass play, but that was all Caden Seamster. Great awareness of with the ball being in midair. You know, he was able to catch the ball, also see the defense coming at him, make a quick little jab to his left, cut back right, and then make his way up the sideline there, um, which, in all honesty, not everybody can do. You know, it's, it's, a very, it's a very quick move to make. It's very uh, field awareness, and he did a great job at it. <laughs> Half the Ulysses defense came running across the line. It's going to be a procedure call, of course, naturally. I'm not sure what that's happened the there, offense. but yeah. That's what I was being sarcastic. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> You weren't picking up my sarcasm. My bad. <laughs> you think I'd be better at that? Well, now, now, now we're changing it to offside. So there we go, you know. We're in mid-season form here. So now the Blue Comet's kind of looking around to see if, well, do we go for two here? Or Seems like the running game has been picking up a little steam, but. Honestly, I say you play it safe. It's still early on in the first half. I mean, almost yeah, I end mean, of the third quarter. Look, but. if we're being honest. The defense hasn't played wonderful, but Ulysses has really not shown a danger of being able to put points on the board at, at any pace. And so you take the extra point here, and Schnute leads 14 to nothing. We'll be right back. You're watching Comet Vision. So Chanute takes a 14-0 lead, and that feels like well, feels like you can exhale a little bit here. A little bit, yeah. A little. 7-0 seven, seven for so long. And a little like, wiggle room. And we're just keeping them around now. 14-0 seems like a mountain. Yeah. 3.09 to go in the third quarter. Boy, Ulysses held the ball with their first possession for so long. $8.50. $280. Fifty-six. Two number four zero six one seven eight four zero six one seven eight. Going up to the press box for two hundred eighty-eight. 
Nope, sorry, Dave. <laughs> I didn't win. I didn't win the 50-50. No. It is it, what it is. Hey, it all goes to a good cause, to the chess team, right? Yeah. They had their media day the other day. That was fun. Who ever heard of chess having media days? Here's a decent return by the Ulysses player. Get up around the 31-yard line or so. Maybe the 32. And Ulysses in a position now where you've been able to move the ball a little bit. And the quarterback has done some things with the legs, but now they find themselves in a position, well, you need to put the ball in the end zone now right. if you're the Tigers. And Chanute, the objective becomes clear. You don't let that happen. Because as John Madden said, whoever has the most points is going to win the game. Yes. He was the best for a reason, Caleb. Aiden Alvarado in the shotgun with his running back, Joel Guadarrama, beside him. I have no idea if I'm saying that right. I hope I no, am. That's offensive. Here's another. Oh, barely got a hold of him. Pretty good run, and the way he almost broke it did Alvarado as he, after he cut it back to the outside, but Schnu managed to wrangle him for a gain of two. Yeah, Alvarado could have had a, a, quite the field ahead of him, just wide open. I would say probably a good five. At least extra five yards. I, I, I'm, I'm, a little, I'm a little confused as to how they're just not keying on. I mean, really, Alvarado has been just their pretty much only output of offense. Yeah. Here is the snap. Alvarado now looking to pass and doesn't let it go until very, very late. We got a flag, and this may be a late hit on the Blue Comets. It was Cade Small out there chasing him down. This could be a pretty big penalty. We'll see what the call is. It is a personal foul. So whatever it was, it was a probably a late hit on the sideline there. And Schnute is going to give up the 15 yards and the automatic first down. Boy, that's rough. Coming off a uh, touchdown and giving quite a bit of field to the offense there on the other end. That's They've definitely got to do something here to counter that. Two receivers here to the near side. Alvarado goes back to work. Here's the snap. He's waggling to his left, clearly looking to pass this time. And of course, a nice pass caught by number 17. Well, he bobbled it, but he got control of it. Withstood the hit. Julian Maraz, sophomore, makes a pretty good catch. And uh, the sticks are moving again. Well, that was... Haven't seen many pass completions tonight from the Tigers, but that was a good pitch and catch there. Yeah, Nate Wilson did a great job of being there. Unfortunately, he was just half a second too late um, giving up the the reception there. Uh, unfortunately, going after the ball prevented him from actually bringing the receiver down. Was able to get an extra yard off the, off the catch. So move down to the Chanute 37-yard line, and... Ulysses has something going at right after what you thought was a schnoot kind of taking hold of the game a little bit. Now another stoppage in play, and we got a delay of game. Well, they've been kind of toying around with that all night. They're about the most relaxed team I've ever seen. They, they are not in a hurry ever. That time it's going to catch them. So first down and 15 now, scooting back to the schnoot 42. Here's the snap and the fake on the handoff. Alvarado sprinting to his right, motioning to his receiver to go block for him. Ball pops loose. And that is recovered by a very observant and quick Ulysses player who was on that. Was that Alvarado? Did he get his own fumble? He, he might have. Oh, my goodness. I know he was on the ground, so he might have been able to stick a hand out there and pull that ball in relatively quickly. Boy, boy, he absorbed a huge hit. Boy, and the ball just... 
he, he, he reached out and he got a piece of the ball and kind of scooted it back to himself. I tell you what, though, that was a pretty smart play because they had that tight end lined up. He was uh, technically standing up, but as soon as they hiked the ball, he pulled towards the near side sideline, bringing the defense towards the middle and gave Alvarado the wide open lane over there to the far side sideline. Second down and 10 as we go under 40 seconds to play in here in the third quarter. This is only the third possession of the, th the entire quarter is Ulysses' first possession Ooh. was, wow. Strong move. Well, a big hit there on the sideline. We're probably going to have a holding on Ulysses called by the entire Chanute crowd. There is a flag on the play. There have been a lot of penalties here tonight, and it has resulted in the, the aesthetic of the game being kind of ugly. It is a hold, and back go the Tigers. So now second down and a long ways for Ulysses, and they're going to have to reach deeper into the playbook here. As the room for Alvarado is starting to grow a little bit less. Alvarado turns again to check the play clock. He's got plenty of time. Now the offensive line gets down. He gives that hard count, but Schnut doesn't jump. Now he points out a possible blitz, but it's not coming. Alvarado forced out of the pocket, gets it. A little screen pass. That's a good design play to the running back, Joel Guadarrama. A nice play call. Gets some, a good chunk of those yards back. It's still going to end up being third and long. And that's going to be the end of the third quarter as the time ticks down. Well, Chanute adds another touchdown and now lead it 14 to nothing, but Ulysses. Still has a chance to put some points on the board here. We'll find out what happens when we come back for the fourth quarter. Don't go anywhere. Third down and 15 coming up to start the last quarter of play. Schnute leads it 14 to nothing, but it has been a, a struggle. And Ulysses has been pressing hard to find some sort of offensive threat. And so far it's been largely Aiden Alvarado, their quarterback, and his legs. Yeah, and it's, it's tough for Ulysses because, you know, they've been making great ground all the way down the field. You know, it's been taking them a little while to make that ground but somehow in some way when they get down there they just they can't pull through so a long third down play we'll see if Aiden puts this ball in the air he is back to pass oh boy here comes the rush and he's got nowhere to go it's gonna be a quarterback sack as balls out the ball came scooting out of there they're gonna say his arm went forward and called incomplete I don't know, because oh, <laughs> as he was going down, he hook-shotted that. Well, you know how it goes. Right. I, I'm not so sure that that I, – I think if you're going to call that a pass, it has to be intentional grabbing. Right. I mean, he was yeah, – that knee was pretty close to down. At any rate, they call it incomplete, and it's – Smart play if you can get away with it. <laughs> I, I don't know – if the, I, I think they should just punt here, probably. I think this is probably a punt. Although, they're not a team built for quick movement, so maybe you do just put one up here. 
Nope, it is going to be a quick kick, and this one's headed for the end zone. We'll see if it finds a corner. Well, it took a backwards hop and goes out of bounds. So a decent kick there from Aiden Alvarado, the quarterback slash punter, and Schnute will start a what is probably the last crucial drive for Schnute here. This yeah, is a, absolutely. You need to take some, some time off this clock. He got a two-touchdown lead, which for this Ulysses team is not built for quick scoring. Right. So along any drive where you get a few first downs here, they got to, I guess what I'm saying, Caleb, is they have to string a few first downs here. Sure. Together. Sure. I mean, if you go ahead and score, I guess that's okay, but. <laughs> we'll take it. Yeah. You know, ideally, you know, run the clock a little bit. You get a roast beef. <laughs> you get a roast. Let's all go to Arby's. There's Caden Seamster in motion. The give to Lena Hunt again. Another flag and another illegal procedure on Chanute. You would think this is the Kansas City Chiefs offensive line. Oh, zing. <laughs> I don't know how many penalties have been called tonight, but it's got to be somewhere near my IQ, which I assure you is a lot. Mm. <laughs> You cut me off before I could really say something there. Lucky you. Either way, <laughs> the, these penalties tonight for the Blue Comets have been just uh, almost uh, detrimental. I'm telling you what, they're, they're probably going to win this game, but, boy, the video session is going to be interesting tomorrow. Yes, absolutely. Here is the snap, the give to Landon Bilby. He tries to string it out and drags a couple defenders for a gain of about one. Second down and long upcoming. And you can kind of sense that maybe Coach Frizzell is in this place where he doesn't know how much trust to give his team at this point. And is just saying, well, we're just going to hand the ball off. And if you guys want to guys want to win this game, you're going to need to open up some holes. They have tried to run the ball more. I would say than they usually do. Here's the snap and the give to Bilby again. This time he makes a cut back to the middle and has some room and gonna make this third down doable. He gets out past the 15, but we got another flag. This one out by where the wide receiver was standing. And it is, uh, it, is that a hold? Yes, it is. Boy, so they call a holding. That's going to be holding on that receiver out there who is nowhere near that play. Oh, goodness. So 10 and a half minutes to go in the game. Shoot does lead 14 to nothing. I don't want the tone of my voice to give you any ideas. Boy, one step the, forward, though. That's the way it's been a lot tonight for the Blue Comets. Four wide outs. Harding waits for the snap, and he fakes the handoff. It's a quick hitter over the middle to Seamster. Again. Oh, another nice move by Caden. The race is on. He's got and he blockers. Makes another man miss. It's going to be a foot race that number 17 is going to have the angle on him and just manages to get him down. Well, that was... Julian Moraz, who made the tackle, and we've called his name a couple times tonight. A couple Schnoo players down at the end of the play. And I'm not have, sure what happened there. Might have collided. I, I'm honestly not sure. That's Cade Small, who's limping off the field. And, boy, Schnoo already kind of hit hard by injuries. Can't really afford to lose Cade. Jace Tarter also in that, uh, in that little pile there. He is laying down on the sideline. And whatever happened... Looked like a defender pushed Jace Tarter right into Cade Small's ankle or something along those lines. Well, the result of the play is it's a big one. First and 10 on the pass, catch, and then subsequent run of Caden Seamster. And as much as we've talked about uh, the quarterback for Ulysses, Caden Seamster has been much the same. Boy, he's done a lot after the catch with the run. Here's Harding letting one go. This one is going to be short, and the receiver comes back to catch the wow. ball. That's Caden Seamster again, is it not? No. Number six. 
Trevor Fields. Trevor Fields, that, that is a high he, skill play right there. Fallen, being able to grab the ball and Harding throws this one up short and oh look at that catch. What a catch. What a great what? catch. Also, let's <laughs> give it up for the camera work. Who is that on the camera? That's a high school student out there with that camera work. That's uh, our very own Brady Hood. Brady. Brady gets a buckeye. <laughs> Incredible camera angle there. So first and goal from the nine yard line and Schnut has found them way found their way down the field here. Looking to put this game away. Harding now has to scramble. He's got some room to the outside and needs to beat one man. He does! Cut back touchdown! But well, what a move by the sophomore quarterback for the nine yard run. And boy, he had a defender out there in front of him who had every opportunity in the world to stop that play and made a great cutback. Touchdown, Chanute. That's going to make it awfully difficult for the visitors from Ulysses. Great awareness by Chris Harding to, you know, one, be able to hold on to the ball because pump faking a defender and being able to, you know, tuck it all with a single hand, it's not an easy thing to do. Cash Fitzmorris came running out onto the field limping. I don't know what, what happened there. He's out there blocking on the right side for this extra point. Now, um, now the referee is. Looks like Cleef and Giselle might be giving him a few words too. Not sure exactly what's going on. We got some tr uh, our trainer going across the field to the Ulysses sideline. So might be checking on someone over there. Make it a little quicker than going around the field. Ulysses. Um, maybe the size of school that they don't have a trainer and maybe one that couldn't make the trip. Offsides. Now we got lots of movement again. I think this is going to be offsides. At any rate, the, the extra point is going to take place and shoot trainers are over there on the sideline helping out a Ulysses player. Honestly, that offsides might have been great timing because it looked like Elliot Stevenson might have poked that right off of the left upright. And that's going to... That's going to convince Cleet Frizzell to just put his offense back out on the field. Well, really, the, the extra point special teams unit has looked pretty solid most of the season. Now, I don't know where, if the two players were missing on the line. Is one of them the long snapper? The snapping has been an adventure tonight. Something like that, yeah. I'm, I'm not, I don't honestly remember what position Hunter Anderson plays off the top of my head. So, Schnood now... We'll just go for two, and they'll line up in that kind of Philadelphia Eagle quarterback sneak formation. That's exactly what we'll see as the entire offense pushes. And, boy, I don't think he made it. I think that is the right call from the official. He kind of – The ball was just short. His helmet went across, but I, don't, I think he kept the ball. Yeah, he kind of fell off to the side. I mean, here's a replay of the touchdown. That Boy, that move right there. Whew. A little cutback. At any rate, it is 20 to nothing now, Schnute. 9.22 to go here in the game. And Ulysses has their work cut out for him. Yeah, that's, it's, you know, scoring, like I said before, putting points up on the board is always going to be great. Um, that two-point conversion attempt you know, does it does it really matter at this point? You got nine and a half minutes left in the game. Um, you're up by basically three touchdowns, and uh, you know you're, you're looking good. Here's a look at that quarterback sneak, and wow, that was really close. He he got that last little stretch out, but I think the defender. Kind of put, got his hand in front of was the ball. Was able to tuck it down to his belly button. Yeah, and, and they brought him down. It's a good call by the officials in, in what was kind of a just, it's, it's, it's always amazing to me how they can see 
in those kind of plays where it's just like, hey, uh, we're going to quarterback sneak, and then the three guys behind them are just going to like kind of envelop him and push him forward. Yeah. Just a pile of boys, and you got x-ray vision. Oh, that ball off the head of the Ulysses return man, but luckily it goes out of bounds. He doesn't have to worry about trying to recover it. Ulysses will start this possession from the 11-yard line. Certainly, I think um, Ulysses, who had, had some tough luck so far this year, have been blown out in all three of their games, have had some, some material to build off of here. They've been able to be a part of this game until, up until now, here late in the fourth quarter. About the only thing they haven't been able to do is put some points on the board. Here's Alvarado running to his left now, and the Schnu defense is strings it out and not going to gain anything, maybe lose a yard. You know, with Alvarado's size, he almost does a great job of almost crouching down and hiding behind his offensive lineman where you can't really see where he's at. And then he just pops up out of nowhere, turns on the Jets, and makes it upfield a couple yards. And unfortunately for him in that case, he turned back and met a Blue Comet defensive lineman right in his tracks. They say he got back to the line of scrimmage, second down and 10 upcoming. Here's the snap. He's back to pass. Looking, and now, oh, this is going to be a face, face mask. mask on Schnute. That's going to stop what and was a pretty good away. defensive play. And, yeah, somehow he got away from that. Picked up an extra few yards. Well, they'll take the result of the penalty as he didn't quite get to the first down marker. But, again, incredible individual effort by Aiden Alvarado, who's been, who's been impressive. And especially with his legs. There's been times where it seems like the – Blue Comet defense had him dead to rights, and he somehow escapes. Now, do they add the 15-yard penalty onto the eight yards that he just gained there, and then an automatic first down? Uh, I'm not sure how that works. Let's go to Gene Steratore, head of the uh, head of the officiating for the NFL. We got him on the line. Hey, pretend to be Gene Steratore. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Can't mess with the director like that. <laughs> <laughs> poor, this poor guy's trying to direct the, the production here. It's all right, Mitchell. I'm just joking around. All right. right. <laughs> First and ten. <laughs> they move it out to their own 33-yard line. Gene's in New York. That's what we forgot. <laughs> we, he wants more money. <laughs> you can double my salary. There you Give go. Give it to him. First and ten. Quarterback for Ulysses uncorks a pass. It'll go out of bounds. Alvarado is running for his life. And a fleet of blue comets on his tail. You have to give credit to Schnuch's defense, even though things have been kind of rough at times tonight. They've still put a goose egg up on the board yeah. for the, uh, the opposing team. Schnuch leads 20 to 0, 8 12 left to go, and it's second down and 10. For Ulysses trying to <clears throat> mount some sort of offensive here in the late going. Keeping things real tight there on the line. Yeah, they used this formation earlier. It's an interesting formation. He's back to pass. Now running for his life again. Boy, it's so fast. <laughs> oh. oh. Hard hit by Cade Small at the end of that. I'm I'm unsure who got the worst of that as Alvarado turns around and has some words. And I, I think he I think he earned it. He got tripped up there at the very end. Blue Comet grabbed his ankle and he was falling forward, took a took a shoulder pad right to the head almost. Oof. Oh, maybe it was a little Boy, helmet to helmet there. Yeah, but he's lucky he didn't get a call yeah, there. Yeah, Jace Tarter. Jace Tarter had a good ten yards of, of momentum behind him. Yeah, that's uh, that's an injury waiting to happen. Yeah, that was a dangerous play right there. And yeah, it, listen, he 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 surely didn't mean to do that. These kids are running at high rate of speed. It's so hard. It's so easy for us to say, hey, that's targeting. Yeah. From with a slow motion replay, but you got to be careful with those helmets. Right. 
Here is the handoff to the running back, and he's got a first down. So it's a good run right there. That might have been a, a different running back running the ball there. No, no, it was the same one, number 15, Joel Guadarrama. So he got what he needed for the first down, and it's a new set of downs at their own 46, but the clock continues to run as we go under seven minutes. We said before, Ulysses not built for speed. They have not shown any signs of doing some no huddle or quick running the offense. Here's the snap and the give to the running back who's got more room than he's had all night. Switches his hands with the ball and tries to stiff arm a man, but he brings him down. The ball came out, but he the official says he's down inside the 30 of Chanute. Well, best run of the night for Joel Guadarrama. Great run by Ulysses. Uh, definitely making a lot of ground trying to score before the end of the game. I'm, I'm going to tell you something right now, Caleb. Listen, I'm a Chanute homer. I, I'm, I'm a Chanute guy. I've been calling these games for years, so I'm, I don't want anyone to get confused. Right. Ulysses is winning me over a little bit. <laughs> look, look at the energy and the attitude they're showing in this drive. Down 20 to nothing, but they're they're popping some, uh, some runs and hitting hard. And they are the I'm, protagonist. I'm kind of impressed. They're winning me over. They're like Rocky in Russia. <laughs> Here's another run by number 15, Joel Guadarrama. This time, maybe got a couple. Hey, all you need is three yards every run. Keep it going. So second down and eight from the 27. Under 5.40 to go here in this play in the game. Alvarado, it's going to be that quarterback draw, and he's got some room to the right side, spinning inside the 15. That was Elliott Stevenson with the tackle. Well, Ulysses has come through with their best drive of the night so far, a feisty one. Yeah, they've, they've definitely got some tunnel vision right on that end zone there, and, and we can see that with with quarterback just keeping the ball, making lots oh, of Oh, a bad there. snap, and this ball is up for grabs, and it would appear that a Tiger fell on that yeah, ball. Yeah, Ulysses was on that first for sure. Now we got a meeting, and it is second down. They say second down. That's kind of been the story of the night for both teams at times where they're doing good things yeah. and then a, a, a mistake happens, and that just appeared to maybe the snap hit someone's leg. I, I'm not really sure. It squirted off to the left. Maybe it skipped across the ground. I, I, yeah, it's, it's hard telling. Both teams struggling a little bit with the snapping here. Alvarado, the give to his running back up oh, the middle. Big running big over ground. a shoot defender inside the two. That's a strong move. And Joel Guadarrama has seen some of his best runs of the night come on this drive. It's first down and goal, and Ulysses threatening to score, and their sideline is urging them on and encouraging them. And here's a timeout. It's a timeout for Chanute. Well, we'll keep it right here. This has been a this has been an interesting drive here by the Tigers from Ulysses as they've, like, look, they've played hard. They, we know they're undermanned. Yeah. They, largely, they're moving the ball the whole night has been the quarterback on this drive. They, I, they're showing some fight. They're showing some gumption, and it's, it's, hard not to, it's hard not to really kind of root for them a little bit in a way of like, hey, these kids put in work, too. Absolutely. They you drove know, eight hours. It's, and, and that's the tough thing. You know, it's so easy, for, especially for a smaller school like Ulysses, to uh, potentially think to themselves, you know, we're going to this uh, much bigger school. We're, we're driving all this distance. Best thing for us to do is just get this over with, get it yeah. done. They could have mailed no, this they're, in. They're, they're fighting for sure. Absolutely. Especially going down three touchdowns. They know they're not a team that's a quick-moving team. They yeah. could have just mailed it in, and, and they come up with their best drive of the night here. And a lot of their a lot of their strengths are really exposing Chanute's weaknesses as well. 
First and goal for Ulysses. As they look to put their first points of the game on the board here with 4.25 to go in the game. Alvarado, more movement on the line. I think this is going to be offsides. The Schnute defender jumps offsides again. I, I, this may be in the running for most penalties I've ever seen in a yeah. Schnute game. This is uh, just mind-boggling right now. They've been doing that hard count pretty much every down, every play. So first and goal again. Here is the snap. Guadarrama right finds his way behind the blockers, and that's a touchdown. So Ulysses gets on the board, and they're smattering of fans who made the trip over there. First of all, good on you all. Yeah. That is, again, that's a some long loyalty. trip. And we got a stream here for you to watch. I, I totally understand if you're back in Ulysses, Kansas, being like, man, I'm just watching this great stream put on by Commavision. Well, and, and there, I'm sure there's lots of parents here that understand exactly what those parents are doing tonight. Hopefully, hopefully a lot of those parents were able to get a hotel room, not have to make that drive overnight like their kids are. Um, you know, that's, that's tough. But you love seeing parents being there for their kids. Here's a two-point conversion try. Alvarado, he's got nowhere to go, cuts it back, now throws back across the field to a wide-open receiver. Wow. And that two-point conversion is good. So it's 20-8, to eight, and Ulysses has something to feel good about. As co wow. we, we got coaches doing flying bumps on the other side. Flying, what is that called? Chest and, bumps? Uh, is that a chest bump? I don't know. Is that know. what that is? I don't Because they look like they turn more to their side. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you what it is if I tried it, uh, a busted knee. <laughs> <laughs> but the coach made it work. That, Early like, look, retirement. Again, I feel kind of good for them. I feel kind of good for them. They're outmanned. They, they they put together their best drive down when, when it looked like all hope was lost. Right, absolutely. And still probably is, although I don't know what we're about to see here, but it could very well be an onside kick. Hey, there's a lot that can happen within four minutes. We see the replay of that two-point conversion, and Alvarado made a good throw, and number 20 for Schnute just couldn't quite get back to it. That was Jordan Duncan, the senior defense back. And again, what I noticed earlier, the body language for Ulysses looks great. They're bouncing around. They're excited. They're happy. Yeah, they're very positive out on the field. And there hasn't been a lot of energy on the Schnute side. Just all night, it's kind of looked... Just a little, it's almost like when you're under the weather, but you're not sick. Yeah. Right? I'm just under the weather. I'm not feeling great. Completely understandable. I mean, look, again, Schnute was expected to win this game. Yeah. You, you, you have nothing to gain. Nothing. The only thing you have is something to lose. Yeah. And so and I understand it completely, and these are teenagers. It's hard. And this, this sounds like a weird comparison, but... The demeanors of both teams on the field kind of remind me of Ulysses being a little brother that finally gets a chance to play with their, his older brother. And the, and Chanute's the older brother that's being forced to play with the little brother. And it, you just see the two different kinds of attitudes out there. So we'll see what they choose to do with the kick here. It is a squib kick. The ball takes a large bounce back to the return man and He's got some room, but he's going to be wrestled down just across the 35. So 4.13 to go, and Chanute will come out on offense looking to kind of fritter away the clock here. They're going to have to string together enough plays without mistakes, without penalties, to try and feel good about this. Of course, you always feel good about a win. A win is a win. Absolutely. But it would be nice if they could kind of string together a drive here that takes up the remaining clock without any mistakes, without any penalties. Some clean sheets here. Right. Well, if, if we're being honest, I mean, Chanute's had enough penalties to be talking about it all week at practice. Be working on it before, uh, before their game next week against Independence. More, more penalties than my daily calorie intake. <laughs> Here's Bilby running and running hard. But a good defensive play by Ulysses keeps them only at a gain of two. Ulysses has, has done a really good job against the run. Yeah, Shanute's been struggling with that 
here as of recently. So the clock moving under four now, second down and eight. Twenty to eight, Blue Comets lead. As they try to run some clock here. Now it's the Blue Comets' turn to not be in any hurry, as the play clock just now goes under ten. And Chris Harding studying that play clock at the other end. It's down to three when the snap comes to give to Bilby, and Bilby is up the field five yards before he gets touched, and he's very near a first down. They're going to mark him maybe just short. Depends on who they know. They, they're going to go with the far side mark. And he's already moving the sticks forward. So first down and a big one. Now how does that work, Caleb? Who who has, uh, I, I don't know enough about football officiating crews and what they're, who has, um, what a, what, who has that call? It's, it's like definitely who the rules who. So the line judge, which is going to be the judge on the far sideline next to the, um, next to the chain gang over there is what we call it. Um, he, it's really between him and the white cap. Um, it, it's between them two to determine, you know, yes, that's close enough. We're going to give them the first down or no, we're going to go ahead and, and measure it. It's a nice and little run by Landon. If we're being honest, you know, at this point in the game, they're probably not going to waste the time measuring that, and they're going to most likely say, ah, it's looking at it from my side, it's, it's close enough. We'll go ahead and move the, cha move the chains. Now, I mean, it helps having the ticks on the field and having the lines on the field to be able to make that judgment call. Uh, and I would say probably about eight times out of ten that call is, is the right call. But, again... You know, it, a lot of times it comes down to just one person. Stop me if you've heard it. It's a penalty on Chanu. Well, <laughs> sound a bit redundant. So 2.26 to go, and Ulysses has all three of their timeouts. I, I wonder. They seem quite content in just having played the game they played. Right. I wonder, though, now with the penalty sending Chanu back, if, if they – Start using some timeouts here. First and 17. Here's the give to Bilby, who's got a big hole up the middle. He's snagged by the ankles and gets just past the original line of scrimmage. And no timeout here to be had. As again, the clock continues to run, which is interesting. Beautiful night, though. It's a gorgeous night. <laughs> gorgeous night for some football. I mean, what else is there to say? <laughs> you know, we had a we had a huge rain shower this morning. Nice clear night to wrap it up. A little football. We're under two minutes to play. The clock continues to tick. Second down and eight. We're sure to see another give to Bilby here. It is the handoff to Landon. Landon picks his way forward and drags a defender and they gain about four. And now we have a timeout. So there's Ulysses' timeout. 1.28 to go. About time to start putting in some of the bench guys. Give them a little bit of uh, on-field experience. There's a bunch of kids in the in the press box. I don't know what's happening right now. What's happening, my man? <laughs> Mistakes were made. <laughs> Where's the resource officer when you need him? <laughs> I was like, what? A, we got a field trip going on in here. Apparently. It's 20 to 8 is the situation. Shanute leads. They're facing a third and four. Ulysses just used their first time out. So they're going to have to stop two plays, I would imagine, here. And use uh, use some timeouts. Right. And from Chanute, I'm guessing you're going to see what you've seen the last several plays in a row, which is a straight handoff to Landon Bilby. First quarter through about halfway through the second quarter, 
the offensive line was finding it tough to open up holes. Yeah. But ever since then, there have been holes for Landon to run through, and he's got some good gains. Well, and you wish that, you know, they would have realized that sooner than later. Um, but I guess there's no – We do have someone different in the backfield right now, I think. Is that Cade Small? Potentially. So five on the play clock. I don't know. There's nothing to milk here. The, the game clock's not running. As that is a run by the Schnute back. It is Cade Small, and that's a first down, and that should do it. Did, did you at least just call their, <laughs> their timeout? Strategy. It is first down. I mean, I'm not imagining that. They, he was a couple yards past the sticks. Well, a timeout here after. There was some confusion as to whether the, whether the, well, the, there was no signal for the first down. So I understand why they took a timeout but it seemed pretty obvious from the play that it was a first down. Boy, we've had a great crowd on our online live stream here. 258 people watching live. Thank you all for uh, tuning in to here to Comet Vision. We do our best to give you a great product. Shoot in the victory formation. This is going to be a kneel down. And the clock will run here. We'll go under a minute to play here. And like I said, that first down pretty much uh, sealed it. Yeah. So Schnuge going to win this one 20 to 8, and I think the, the goal now is get healthy. Yeah, and that for some, that can be a long road. Um, hopefully for a majority of the individuals that are out, that's not nearly as... As long that could be a quick and relatively painless process. Here is the snap and the kneel down. And that is going to do it. So Schnoot gonna win this one 20 to 8. And it was it was not pretty, but a win is a win. Look at the look at the students out there in their construction night gear. Looks like a village people concert. The clock ticks down. The players mill about. Thank you, everybody. As Caleb said, watching the stream tonight. As the clock ticks out, it is officially a ball game. Schnoot wins it 20 to eight. The players come across the field to shake hands and uh, we pray for safe travels to the team that came across the state in Ulysses that they make it back home tonight safe and sound back in their town they got a lot to hang their hat on tonight as they fought hard and uh, very impressed by that last drive they put on to score when they could have just folded it in um, it seemed like Chanute had the ball had the ball game in control even though they they didn't really play you know put their best foot forward tonight uh, but I was very impressed with Ulysses' fight there at the end and just kind of will to punch that last score in. They're, they're, they're only points of the game. So they got a lot to be encouraged about as they move forward. And for Chanute, well, you just say a win's a win and you move on and you, you come to the video room tomorrow and you look at all the mistakes you made and you do your best to, to shore up the leaky parts and, as you said, try to get healthy. Offensive game ball goes to Caden Seamster tonight. He had a great game, and at times seemed like he was 
the kind of beating heart of the offense. He made two huge plays happen with his feet after short pass catches, um, and it was that was very good. Defensively, defensive game ball. I don't know. We're going to go with Cade Small. That's I think that's where we're going. Cade Small always around the ball and uh, played well on defense as always. So we'll give the game ball to Cade Small. Thank you so much for tuning in to Common Vision on behalf of the Chanute uh, Broadcasting uh, Visual Broadcasting Class and their instructor, Caleb Wood. Reminder, this is all high school students who are putting on this game for you, this wonderful stream. Uh, they're doing the production. They're doing the camera work, and, and it was just great tonight. They do good work, as always, and I'm just an idiot up here who gets talking to a microphone. So on behalf of all of them who do the real work, thank you so much to everyone who has a part in putting together this stream and helping out these classes. These kids learn something that uh, they, they a lot of kids don't have the opportunity to learn. Schnoot wins 20-8. to 8. We'll see you next time. Thank you so much for t tuning in to Common Vision.